welcome to our workshop where we're going to create some texture with tissue paper, regular tissue paper that you get at the store. And they come in a variety of colors. Uh, my name is Chris Cruz, and I will teach you some easy and fast ways to create this beautiful bird using tissue paper, okay? But we're gonna use paints too. It can't be a painting class without paints, right? So first thing I did just for the camera is I made like a little egg shape to create the little body of the bird. So you can take a pencil and just create a big egg, right? And you don't need to know how to draw or anything like that. Everybody knows how to do an oval for an egg. So what I do is I take a fine point Sharpie or you can use whatever Sharpie you have at home. And I just start going around that egg and not really drawing it. If you go like this straight, it kind of looks boring, right? So we want a little action in our painting. So I just go around and outline my bird. Here's his little eye. And do a circle, right? We all know how to do shapes. So when you're painting, think of things as shape. This is kind of like a little triangle, right, for his little nose and we can add this on here. The eye is a circle, and this is the letter V or U and an upside down U. Now to do the little body here, I just squiggled, you know, just kind of like very loose, do a little squiggle. And don't worry about the pencil lines when you're painting, right? Here we have a little branch where this little bird is sitting, so it's just straight lines across. And we're gonna put a little uh, diamond here in his eye to highlight it. And if you look at the feet, think of it as, you know, little peppers. A little pepper is pointy on the bottom, right? And it has a little curve on the top. And then you have the connection of the leg here, which is straight lines, right? So we're not really even drawing. Same thing here, little pepper, little fat area here. And this bird has four feet, and I don't know if that's normal for a bird or not, but I know that the birds in my backyard, I can't see all their little feet, but I know they're hanging onto a branch. So now we're gonna go here. And in Alabama, we have such beautiful birds. I love look, looking at all these birds that come in into my backyard. So this, that's where I got my inspiration from, sitting out there looking at the little birdies. Now this little guy has a lot of feathers, so we're just gonna zigzag the hairs out. So if teachers, you're helping with your students, um, this is a very easy project to do, uh, and it, you don't need a big amount of help. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my Sharpie to the side, because we don't need that anymore, and we are going to be using a little bit of modeling paste. And you can use any brand, any brand is good, uh, but the modeling paste is gonna help us put the paper down on our bird. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I am going to put a nice little glob of modeling paste here on my palette, okay? And I'm going to put my tube to the side, remember, close the tube up because it can dry if you don't. And from all the colors here, um, I asked some of the students here, what color did they want me to do this? And from all the colors that I had here, they chose yellow. So if you have blue or purple at home, use that color. But my little peeps today decided on yellow. So yellow it is. We're gonna need paints. So what color paints do we need? Well, if you look at the little bird that we did, we have orange and we have yellow, but we're gonna take advantage of the tissue paper being yellow to use that as paint, right? But you can't tell anybody, let them wonder how did you do this? Then you're gonna do blue for the bottom here. And we know branches are not blue, but why did we do it in blue? Because we wanna make sure that the bird shows up. And if you do it in brown, it kinda like, you know, sits them down too far. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually put a little bit of yellow on my paper. You can use a paper plate, wax paper, anything you have. You know, sometimes I've even taken my McDonald's lids and just flattened them out and just put some paper paint on it. So anything works, anything is good. So let's open this one up and this one is blue and it can be any blue. 
you like purpley blue, you like brown blue, it doesn't matter, blue is blue. And I'm going to take a little bit of my red and put it on my palette. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really try to put this paper down on here. But how am I gonna glue it on? Okay, well, first of all, I don't need all this paper. So now that you know you have a nice sheet of paper, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip it. And it doesn't matter how you rip it. We don't need this. You save this for another project. Okay, you put it to the side. Always take away from your table what you're not using. It kind of gets crowded on your table and it takes away from you being creative. So you really want to just work in a clean area. Although if you looked at my area where I paint, it's not as clean as this, I have to admit. But, you know, we're all artists, so that's the way it is. So I don't want my paper to be straight because then I'll see a straight line going right through my bird. So what I want to do is just cut these edges off, right? And kind of see where this little guy is going to be. And it's like, okay, that little guy can fit there on my little bird. But to me, the way it is, it's too flat, right? So people are going to be able to tell, oh, that's tissue paper. Well, no, you're going to fool them. You're going to take your paper and you're going to crumple it up into a little ball. Really good. So that it has all these little wrinkles in it. And then very carefully open it up. And then you're going to lay it down. And that's what's going to give you that little texture that people are going to wonder, how did you do that? So now I am going to take a big brush and I'm going to put a little bit of water in my brush. And I'm going to have a paper towel next to me at all times because I'm going to blot. And what does blot mean? I'm going to tap tap with my brush to get the excess water out. But we want to have this water in here so that this can glue. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to wet my bird with a little bit of water. Right. And then I'm going to take my modeling paste and I'm going to rub it onto my paper. I'm sorry, onto my canvas. And then I am going to lay my paper down. And with my brush, I'm going to pull it to the outside here so that we can have a wrinkly little surface. See that? Now, when this molding paste or modeling paste, some people call it molding paste, dries, you won't see all that white. So, and see, I broke my rule already. I have a straight line here, which See, no problem, just take it off. And I'm just gonna pick at it so I don't rip the rest of the paper out. Okay. And don't throw your paper on the floor like I just did. So now you keep putting your molding paste and flattening it out. Now this paper is very delicate. So you don't really want to press because it rips, see that? So if it rips, no big deal. Take it off, get rid of it and brush it out so that the little corners all get really glued down. Now remember when I told you we were gonna cheat a little bit and put a little bit of paint on here? Well, that ripped again, so I'm going to pick it up. Ah, and I'm not even gonna pick it up. I'm just gonna go here, get rid of that excess, put it on my palette here. Now this is gonna dry clear, okay? So what I'm going to do is to, to make sure that my red and my yellow goes together, I am going to take my yellow paint and go over it so that it looks like I painted on my little birdie here. And he's gonna have a little yellow up here. And I'm not painting the eye because I want the eye to be black or brown, blue. Now while this is still wet because all of this here is gonna be wet for a little while, you're going to take your red. And what I did is, I put my yellow in my brush, right? But don't rinse it out. Take a little bit of red just on the side of your brush. And then take it on your paper and just mix it on the side. And if you notice, you have two colors on your paper. You have a little red and you have a little yellow. So when you put your brush down on your paper, you want to go very soft 
because remember how this paper rips very easy? So I'm just going to come here and put a little bit of that color on the wings and let it mix in the background. And now you have some really cute little wings, right? Now he has some little red color here. I'm going to put some of that there and he has some coming inside here. See how you don't need a lot of paint and a lot of uh, colors to do this beautiful bird. I will put a little bit of this and look, I am just very softly going around his eye. I don't care if I skip a little color, that's fine. I'm going to put some on the top here because remember we're creating texture, right? And I'm going to put a little bit of that and I'm just using what I have left in my brush. See that? There's a lot of paint still on there. So you don't need a lot of paint to do this and put a little bit of paint in there, okay? Now, when this dries, you can go over it again with your pen to get that black out and showing. But don't do it now because since this is wet, it will clog up your pen. So that's the only thing you have to remember. So the way it is right now, just let it be. And then tomorrow when it dries, you can come back and do that part. Now, we want to do the branch where he's standing on. So I rinsed my brush a little bit and I just wiped it on my paper towel. And I picked up a little bit of my blue and I just kind of brushed it on there. And here I'm going to tap because I don't want to rip my paper. Now it looks like my little branch is all textured, right? So I can do the same thing here and a little bit in here to make believe it's all connected, right? Okay. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush and this one happens to be a round number 12, but you can use any round you have. If you are painting, any color will do. And we want to do the little brown of his feet right but since there's already yellow on there we really don't have to paint it we're kind of going to shade it and brown can be any brown so i will take yellow on my brush and mix it with a little bit of the brown so that the yellow that i had on here goes together and i'm just going to take a little bit of that brown and put it on his little feet and mark it out, okay? I think he has another little, f f not feet, a little paw, a little chicken thing. I don't know what birds have, but whatever they hang out to, okay? So now, and maybe they are called feet, I don't know. So I will take black, any kind of black. Put it on here on your palette. And we're gonna do the little beak but if you notice on the color paper, there's a little blue in there. So when you're painting um, the beak, I'm going to give you a little hint. Whenever you see, you see black in a painting, the artist never did it just straight black. They put another color in there like blue or purple or something like that because if it's black, it's going to look flat. And with the little blue here, it's going to highlight a little bit, right? So this little paper is sticking up a little bit, and I can't see my little beak, so I'm just going to flatten it out. I'm not even going to rinse my brush out. And like I said, when this dries, this will be all clear. You won't even see it. So I will take a little bit of blue in my brush, and I'm just going to take the tip here and just blot it, blot it, blot it, right onto my bird. And just with the tip of it, just go out and make a nice little beak. And without rinsing my brush, are you, you're catching on, right? I don't rinse my brush too often. So I will take a little bit of black and I am going to go right under the line here and make a little line for his beak and then just smooth it out a little bit. And now you can see a little bit of the blue, but you still have the black in there. For the eyes, I'm going to go outside the line here and I'm going to outline him so that he has a nice little eyelash. And I'm going to take my brush, my round brush, and I'm going to flatten it out. See that? It's going to make a nice flat line. And I'm going to hold my brush straight and I'm going to give him some little feathers coming down. 
And I mean, you can get as elaborate as you want with this. This is your project, this is your bird. Don't forget to name him. I don't know what I'm gonna name mine. Hmm, I don't know. Philip, I don't know, I'll, I'll name it something. So I am going to put some little black here. Okay, and I'm going to, again, take my brush, flatten it out just like that. See that? Do it under the eyes. And now we have a little bird, right? Take the little nails here on the little pores and make them a little bit darker. And now when all of this dries, which would be probably tomorrow when you come back to school or something, then you can take your pen and outline all of these lines that the paper covered up. But it's easier to do it that way than to try to come back and say, okay, let me cut the paper in an oval, it's not gonna work. For the background, I never like my backgrounds just, blue, just white. So I will take my big brush again and I'm going to wet it a little bit, but I'm not gonna go too close to the bird because since that's wet and it's paper, it's gonna seep into the bird. I will take a little bit of my blue and I'm gonna make it really watery. And I'm gonna start from the outside and I'm just gonna scrub, turn your little piece around. Go here, turn it around. I'm gonna come right here and turn it all the way. Go around his belly. Turn him around again so you can see it. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of that brown and put it around the sides here so it doesn't look like one big brown background, I mean blue. Wipe my brush and then just move it around and let all that paint play together there. And I'm telling you, when you come back tomorrow and you take a look at this, you're not gonna believe how cool it's gonna look. It's gonna look just like this, all wrinkly and all of that. And But see all of these lines here, you'll be able to redo them. And just add color wherever you want. I'm gonna put a little bit of that brown right here on the top of these little wings. Why not? And there you have it. Now, can that get any easier than that? Just tissue paper, a canvas, a couple of colors of paint, and you got yourself a beautiful bird. You can name this bird whatever you want. I don't know what kind of bird this is. I kind of made it up in my head. So if you want to make one up in your head too, you feel free to go ahead and do that. Show me some samples of what you did. If you have any questions, put it in the comments and say, you know, Chris, I have a question. Can you help me out with this? And I'll be happy to answer back to you. And enjoy your painting. And if you ever um, want to do others, just use the extra tissue paper that you have and you could create a whole family of birds. So enjoy your painting. Thank you for spending your time with me today. And I will have more videos for you that you can watch at your convenience and they're all gonna be a little different. So. Happy painting, everybody, and I'll see you soon.